It's pretty intense. So I guess I a little plug if you, if, you, if you have means. It's about a thousand bucks a year. It is not cheap. It's meant for that per year per. It's per login. So what he'll do is he'll say, okay, if you're high school, you're middle school, if you're all going to subscribe and your coaching staff is all hooked up together, he'll work a deal out. So I, I get nothing out of this. I'm not. This is not. <laughs> I'm just. This is the best thing you can do that I know of. I've been doing this a long time. This is the best source for just starting out. And it's not going to. There's a little bit in there for a college coach, so I, that's why I spent some time in there. But I'd say 75% of it is for like middle school. Middle school and JV lacrosse. There's even a section for the you know girls lacrosse over here that he has a little bit, not a lot, but you know, girls stuff. So I didn't think it was quite that expensive because I got a quote on it at one point. That's what I thought for it was. Youth program. It's, Maybe it's not For some reason, that I was thinking like it was 350 or something like that. Well, it was like you said, we have 20 teams. And that's yeah, yeah that's, that's the thing. Is if you're signing up for a program or an individual. I bet you he would even, like, where did Mike go? I bet you he'd even do an IM Lax thing, probably. Where like if you pay, or if IM Lax pays a fee and you guys get access and the password's only good so long or something. So yeah. anyway, I just thought I'd throw that up as. We're always trying to improve, and I've spent a lot of money, a lot of time going to a lot of clinics and conventions. And I, I was thinking on the way over here, I've definitely forgot one that I know today. And so, like, you just have to stay in it, you know. And I think, like, anything in business uh, or you know, anything that's pat you're passionate about, you just got to stay in it. And so, for me, it's been it's been that. So I'll just introduce myself a little bit, and then we'll just jump in. Um, uh, this is going to be uh, more of a teaching. Presentation, not a present. I mean, not a PowerPoint kind of thing. It's just going to be me sharing some thoughts, and uh, hopefully, it's helpful. It's geared towards. Well, I'm going to show you stuff we're doing at the college level, but it's basic. It's real basic, and you'll see why. But a little background on me, because I don't recognize many faces, and maybe you don't recognize me. But I, um, again, Jason Lamb. I'm the head coach at Southern Virginia University. Um, was the uh, just finished my sixth year there for five years of the six I was the athletic director there as well, um, building an athletic program off the ground, which was a great fun, but it became too much. I couldn't do both. And uh, when I met with the president, he thought I was going to stop coaching and just be the AD. And I said, No, I'm not done coaching. And so I kind of caught him off guard. And so uh, we now have a new athletic director. But I. Um, I grew up, I was born in Logan, moved when I was one years old, but I grew up in New York. I graduated from New York, Long Island. I played uh, lacrosse to me was as common as soccer. Well, soccer now, or as common as basketball was then. I mean, lacrosse was just a big part of who we were and what we were. Oh, hey, Tom. What's up, man? How are you? <laughs> Did you just sneak in? Yeah. Do you live it. here? Yeah. I mean, this is one of my players. <laughs> Did you move over? How long? About four years ago. That's so cool. What, 2001 team? When yeah. did you graduate? Yeah, 2001. Uh, the best team I ever coached that didn't win a championship. <laughs> well, that's, well, that's cool. Uh, anyway, so my story is uh, graduated high school in New York, uh, played lacrosse like every, you know, thought it was common. I was a wrestling scholarship, went to BYU on a wrestling scholarship. Um, when I got to BYU, they killed the program, wrestling, or they, it was no longer varsity after about a year, 18 months. Um, and But I played lacrosse and I was ready to transfer out. I was done. I was a, a brass, obnoxious New York, half Mormon boy at BYU, and so I was I was done. If you were going to wrestling here, I'm out. And I was walking out of the dorms, DT, back before they crushed them, and there were a bunch of guys playing lacrosse, and I said, oh, they actually have lacrosse here. And it, it, it really turned my life around because I made some great friends to this day and um, stayed. And there's a long story to address that. Anyway, uh, I graduated from BYU, and when I was a player at BYU, um, the senior guy was the coach, or a senior was the coach. There were no non-student coaches. Uh, so after I graduated, I was the first non-student to coach the team. I was a volunteer, and I did it as more like a favor. Uh, the coach at the time was Canadian, and he had coached the team when I played a little bit. Greg Saunders, maybe you know the name. You know Greg Saunders. <laughs> so he ended up, uh, he had to head back to Canada during Christmas, but he couldn't get back across the border. I had a green card, it was a student visa thing or something back then. And 
Yeah, so he said, I need you to coach for a couple of weeks. And here I stand, because I never got out of it. So I coached at BYU as a head coach for 15 years. We won three national championships. I started the MCLA. Uh, the term MCLA was uh, made up by me and three other guys uh, uh, over a period of a year. We created the collegiate division of, of college lacrosse. And, uh, and so it was great, but I wanted to be full time. So I, I took a leap of faith and left BYU and started the lacrosse program for the men and women at Adams State. I was there for two years, and then while I was there, I coached the Outlaws for a little bit, the professional team out of Denver, which was a lot of fun. And that led into an opportunity where I went to Notre Dame and I was director of operations for Notre Dame's men's lacrosse team for two years. And then I got a call, multiple calls, until I finally said yes to go help build lacrosse at Southern Virginia University, which, for those who don't know, is a it's an independent, it's not owned by, it's a private university, but it's not owned by the church, but it uh, supports the values of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. So it's an honor code-based environment, but no subsidy from, we're all on our own 100%, and uh, it's been fun, it's been a lot of fun. Um, so that's my background. Uh, recently, uh, this last summer, I got to coach the professional, uh, the PLL, so I was one of the assistant coaches for Team Atlas, which was a blast. So, so I've, I've kind of coached everything, uh, women as men, but on the men's side, I've done Division One, Division Two, Division Three, and club. Um, I guess I haven't done junior college, but uh, so I've done a little bit of all that. So that's my background. Uh, very familiar with Utah until 2010 when we moved away. It's been nine years, but man, it's changed, and but it's uh, fun to be back. So I appreciate Ian Lax and Marty Westcott who set this up. I literally flew out today, fly back tomorrow, but that's how I feel about it. Um, I love doing this. Uh, I presented at U.S. Lacrosse Conventions back in Baltimore. I presented it, uh, uh, at the um, IMLCA conventions, and so I just, whatever I get asked, I don't mind doing it. I particularly have an affinity for and love for Utah and what's going on here. As we were talking about a few of you when, uh, when we got started, I remember when there was no high school in Utah. So it was, uh, I remember when the first team started at about 95 or 96. Uh, so. It's just fun to see where we are. I was mentioning too, I had a role with sanctioning. In 2007, I sat with the USH, UHSAA executive board and kind of lined up the pathway to get us to be sanctioned. I say us, but I left in 2010, but it's good that we got it all done. So there you go, that's my, my intro. Um, okay, so we're gonna talk defense. So disclaimer, <laughs> uh, until this summer, I've never been a defensive coach. So 15 years, as Ralph knows, coaching offense. I was a goalie, played goalie in high school, played goalie at BYU. And when I became a coach, my mentality was we're going to outscore the opposition, not, not we're going to keep them, keep them uh, under, under 10 goals. Uh, my mentality maybe went to we're going to score 18 and we're going to win a lot of games, and we did. And I don't even remember what, we were, what was the defensive plan on the national championship team of 97 or 2000 or 2007, those teams that we had some great teams down in Provo. I don't even know what we did defensively because I coached the offense and it was like, we're just going to score a lot of goals. And I, I'll be honest, I think I've done a, a over time to learn how to be a really good offensive coach. Uh, last year at our school, we did not have a great year. Um, it's self inflicted wound. I upped our schedule. I went for a big strength of schedule, which and, and NCA is very important if you follow sports, you know, RPI and strength of schedule. So I went big and we paid the price, but we had uh, we had the 25th best scoring offense in the country, and again, and our strength of schedule was 25th in the country. We uh, we almost scored, so it was like 15.8 goals a game. It's pretty awesome. Defense gave up 18 goals a game, <laughs> so we had a rough year. Uh, all that led to I was going to coach pro. Uh, I, I got on staff originally. My assignment was goalies, faceoffs, and run the box. And I'd never run the box before in my life, so that was the one thing I had to prepare for. But having been a goalie and worked with faceoffs, I wasn't too intimidated. About midway through the season, because I did all the film work and I'm just kind of a kind of a nerd that way. Um, I figured out what was wrong with the defense of that was. We started out one and three, but we finished five and five, and we're tied for third, and, but uh, the tiebreaker, we didn't make the final four playoffs, and so we got relegated into the, what did they call it, the uh, first pick game or whatever. And it, 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 you know, it, 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 it was what it was. But, uh, but midway through the season, uh, I was the one that was like, hey, here's the three things we're doing on defensively. Uh, you don't have to do rocket science. The data is, you know, it is what it is, and, and personality-wise, I'm a little more 
loud in New York, and the other the defensive coach was quiet. So the coach made an internal announcement. We switched. So I became defense coordinator halfway through the summer, and he became the bench and or box. Well, he didn't do the box because he was afraid. So I still ran the box and coached the defense, and that's how it was. the pro summer finished, which was awesome. Now, having said all that, I shared with you because our spring season was rough, and so we made some coaching changes on my staff. And one of the changes was I'm coaching the defense this next year. So that started before the PLL summer, and then that rolled right into fall. So in the fall, I was already this fall. You know, well, you'll see some film from fall, and I coached the defense. Now, the reason I tell all that because what I'm going to talk about tonight is, I guess I could like to use the word innovative. Because no one is teaching what I did or what I'm doing. Now, I use, I subscribe to this philosophy. I know what Thanksgiving dinner looks like. I don't know how to make it. I know what good defense looks like. I don't know how to necessarily get it done. So I had a really refreshing approach. You know, as an offensive coach, I can definitely tell you, I, I got really good at developing offensive players. I could do it in my sleep. I knew exactly what needed to get done. I knew how to take the first steps before the second steps, before the third steps. And I can be honest that offense was something I prided myself on. I could develop good offensive players. Now, don't get me wrong. Genetics, athleticism has a lot to do with it. But the ability to take somebody that's pretty raw, you know, I made a career in coaching of, uh, of making offensive players better. So in that vein, that's what this discussion is about is how to develop individual defensive players. And I'm going to tell you some of, the, some of the mistakes that I already can tell you I've witnessed and, and I know exist because I saw it over all these years. And that is to say that on most teams, there's a pecking order. And it happens right away on the first day. <laughs> he can catch, he can throw, or he can shoot, or he's fast. He's now an offensive player. And you're slow, and you can't pass, and you can't catch. So now you're a defensive player. And that happens. I'm telling you it happens. I see head shaking, agreeing with me. It happens on just about every team you're going to coach. And that has to snap if you ever want to have a good defensive team. Now, I've gone up against buzzsaws, defensive buzzsaws. I have. I've lost games that I thought I could have won or should have won. And it's because the defenses could shut down my offense. But I've never, as a coach to this point, have had experience of, oh, my defense is what shut them down. So I'm excited. Um, I'm going to share with you some of this stuff, and we're just going to dig in. I want you to ask a lot of questions. But I felt like this preface build-up should help you understand that I didn't come here to teach you what you can get on a video from wherever, or go sit in front of somebody to talk about, because I'm just going to be in a very kind of really different place about my presentation. But mine comes from the background of I learned how to coach offense through um, development. I, that's the key here is development. And if you're going to make your defense work, uh, you got to sacrifice and make the right decisions about personnel. So proofs, you know, in, in, in my mouth, in proofs of the pudding, I, I, my son, I just finished, I, my youngest son is a senior right now on our team, senior. As a freshman, he was a rookie of the year in our conference and he made all conference. Sophomore year, he was first team all conference as an attack on the left knee. Junior year last year, first team all conference. He's a three time all conference attack man. And he, this summer, he got to intern with me at the PLL. Uh, he was at every game, every trip, and had a blast. Learned a lot. And midway through the season, he's like, I said to him, Look, this has been fun. You get to stand on the sideline, watch these pro guys. What do you think we need? What do we got to take back to our, our, our campus on our team, your senior year? He's like, we don't have team days. I'm like, you're right. It's the last thing that gets picked. Because even in the defensive world, there's pecking order, right? <laughs> the real media years get the poles, and these two guys play D mid, and they're like the lowest level <laughs> of anything on the team, and they're the D mids. And Sean and my son said, Dad, we need, we need good D mids. I said, yeah, I've been trying to do that for a while. So um, he switched to D mid. So you're going to see him on film. He's the most athletic guy on our team. and Scored, you know, three, he's averaged three and a half points a game over his whole career. I think we're still going to get three and a half points out of him as a D man because he can't, you can't stop him when he has the ball in transition. So now we're just going to score after, hopefully, you know, he'll be tired of time. So, so 
personnel, think about it. I won't go into it much more, but I can tell you right now, that's the biggest mistake most coaching staffs make. And it's a mistake made at a youth level. The kids want to be popular, they're probably going to end up trying to play offense first. And it's uh, defense is how your team really stands out. So, all right. Um, so, as I decided myself, and I'm just giving you my journey through what I went through recently. When I decided that I wanted to be a better defensive coach, I had the privilege, though, of being, as I told you earlier, at Notre Dame. Notre Dame's defense is really, over the last decade, has been. Uh, defense at Notre Dame has been seen as the best you know, that there is. And for those that don't know, Notre Dame's defense is a heavy slide recovery help defense. And I think a good way to kind of describe that to, it's like synchronized swimming. <laughs> One guy goes and helps, another guy drops, and these guys push from behind, and then everybody springs back, and then you reset, and you get ready for the next dive, but then on the next dive, there's a slide, there's a recovery, and everybody springs back. It's just this massive exercise of military motion between six individuals, which is pretty impressive. And as Greg knows, he just walked in, a former player of mine in Southern Virginia. When we got to Southern Virginia, we tried putting it in. I wish Greg could have heard the beginning of this talk, because I think he'd appreciate it. You know, we tried that for six years running this slide recovery defense. And, you know, it's just one of those things you just can't do. You just can't do it unless you have all the right parts. And if one of the six guys is weak or does something wrong and steps the wrong way, or is a little late or a little early, everything just gets out, out like synchronized swimming. It stands out, make a mistake, give up easy goals, and that's why we scored or gave up 18 goals, 18 goals a game last year on a, on a season where we scored the most goals ever. So why do I tell you all this? Because the defense that I built for us this fall, we didn't help. <laughs> we played VMI, and I'll show you the film in a minute. We played a Division One team that's local in town in a scrimmage, and we didn't slide up once. Now they scored on us, but we needed to learn how to play defense without help. I think most of the times you go to these kind of talk sessions, people are going to talk to you about defensive schemes, whether it's a zone or man-to-man, -man, and if it's this defense, and you got to have this help package, and you got to have this, you know, system. Systems are great, and I'm not an anti-system guy, but what I am. When I teach offense, when I taught offense, I taught individual ability. And then get six guys on the field that can do that together and just learn how to run space well and maybe how to get out of each other's way. So the defensive talk for me tonight, this, this intro that I'm giving you, is so much about the individual component uh, of how to play defense. So just to build on the theme, I believe the key to defense is the opposite of what I was trying to get out of defense is what I, the opposite of what I was trying to do on the offense. Offense, hands free, get to your shooting spot, hammer the ball. <laughs> hands free, get to your spot, hammer the ball. Hands free, get to your spot, hammer the ball. So if you're going to be a defensive guy, don't let him get where he wants to get. <laughs> don't give him hands free, and you won't hammer the ball. So, so conceptually, this is how I started this journey over the summer and then in the fall. So the word that I want to show you some clips. Um, these are all recent clips of, recent, of, of, of hockey and one of soccer from PLL on Sunday and one of uh, LSU cornerback that you would have watched last night if you watched um, you know, the, the championship game. And the word that I'm going to teach, the, the thing that I'm teaching my guys, the thing that I'm going to teach you tonight is about ball pressure. And I'll just show you a couple examples of that, not in lacrosse terms, and then we'll roll it into a discussion about lacrosse. And I hope it helps. And please ask questions, slow me down. Okay, I can get rid of that. All right, so oh, everything was perfect. Let's see what happens here. All right, so I'm a Man City fan. I'm not passionate about soccer, but I do enjoy it. So I'm going to show you a clip here. This is from Sunday, I think. Um, what's happening? Uh, okay, here we go. All right, so I just want you to see, um, it's going to be hard for me to, this uh, player, Aguero, right here, is going to pick up the ball, and he's going to get all the way inside the box and score a goal. I'll let you play through, and you can watch how he scores the goal, and this gets a hat trick on, so, 